So Martin McDonough is a British playwright turned filmmaker who I've been hearing about for years, but I had never gotten to see any of his four feature films until recently. After viewing each of his movies, holy fuck, this guy is one of the best filmmakers around. Not only filmmaker, but one of the best writers working today. His dark comedic style is so unique to himself, and although early on watching his films, I thought, wow, this guy is the closest you can come to replicating the Tarantino type style of writing. I've grown to appreciate the fact that McDonough's style of writing is really its own unique thing with its own original voice. All four of his films are close to masterful, so although I'm ranking them from worst the best, this is really me ranking them from best to fucking insane. If you haven't seen any of these films, this is your sign from some higher power to go watch all of these films and appreciate one of the best filmmakers alive. Before I get started, make sure to sub, hit the notifications button, and follow me on TikTok. Also, spoiler warning ahead for these films, I'm probably gonna be spoiling some of them. Seven Psychopaths ranks last, but it's in no way, shape, or form anything less than a great movie. It's a film that would definitely rank at the top of most filmmakers' filmography. I just think it's by far as goofy as film and doesn't have as strong of an emotional gut punch that the other three ahead of this have. The film stars Colin Farrell, who's writing a screenplay about, well, the Seven Psychopaths. Throughout the film, we're introduced to many of these psychos, with a conflict being stirred up when Sam Rockwell's character comes in possession of a dog owned and hilariously beloved by dangerous man Charlie, played amazingly by Woody Harrelson. Christopher Walken also plays a psycho, and he is so unbelievably good in this thing. Easily has the most emotional scenes in the whole film. What makes this film work so much is the two main factors. First is the great and hilarious, sarcastic style of writing that McDonough pulls not only in its dialogue, but within the action of every single scene. A simple gunfight in any movie with high stakes is really cool, but what if we have a character hold a dog hostage with a flare gun? Forget about the flare gun, you fucking idiot. Stuff like this makes this film both unique and hilarious at the same time. The second thing that makes the film work are the unbelievable performances from pretty much everyone involved. This will be a theme for all of these films, but McDonough has a way of pulling the absolute best out of his cast, and this film is a perfect display of this. Sam Rockwell is one of the best and most underrated actors in the world, and he absolutely owns this movie, creating a character that's so much fun to watch, but also leaves you on the edge of your seat, almost waiting for him to snap. Colin Farrell is great also, and Woody Harrelson does his typical thing, but it works so perfectly for this script. Overall, this is a fantastic film, and although I like his other three movies a little bit more, I still recommend checking out Seven Psychopaths as soon as you can. This is McDonough's most recent film, and the one that I really thought was going to win Best Picture at the Oscars. The film stars Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, and tells the tale of two friends who are split up after Colin, played by Gleeson, decides that he doesn't like Farrell anymore. It's a really simple and dumb premise, but the film does not disappoint to deliver good on it. The film is both hilarious due to its ridiculous circumstance of the characters, but also heart-touching with Colin's character being so easy to love with his innocent performance. The film eventually turns darker, allowing for its characters to legitimately go at each other's throats, which is done so very well. But this whole film has a sense of tragedy to it. Avoidable tragedy, which I believe reflects the whole subtext of this film, which is a sub-commentary on Civil War. And that's also where my biggest issue in this film lies, because I feel like the film reminds you way too often about what it's trying to say about the world and the message that it wants to tell you. Instead of letting it just be organically displayed, which it still does well, it instead just constantly shows you, like, images of Civil War, and it, it really just bats you over the head with it. Other than that small complaint, I still love just about everything about this film, with its beautiful location and, and use of cinematography. Full commitment, not only from Farrell and Gleason, but the underrated performances from Barry Keegan and Mike Ermitraut's daughter-in-law, Carrie Condon. Yeah, seriously. The score is remarkable, and ultimately the film gets better on rewatches, something that's extremely hard to accomplish in filmmaking. This film is amazing, and I'm excited to see how it ages. In Bruges is such a good movie. It's amazing to think that this was McDonough's first Hollywood feature, creating a film that's so hilarious and emotional, telling a really dark story at its core, but having so much fun during its runtime. Let's start with the cast. Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell, like the Banshees, work together perfectly with natural chemistry that's impossible not to buy into. Also great in this movie, Ray Fiennes, who's only in the third act, but my God, does he steal the show. He is absolutely hilarious in this film. The location of Bruges serves its intended purpose, acting as a character in itself and bleeding into the subtext of the story. Colin Farrell's character has such a unique plot hook that that's so bold and understandable, and it makes the character feel really, un like, real. And it's different enough from the Banshees, where the characters don't feel like a rehash. Or I guess the Banshees would be a rehash. Point being, this is a phenomenal movie, and I have zero complaints. It's just that there's one more movie that Martin has made that I consider to be one of the greatest films ever. <laughs> 
this film is fucking insane, man. It's the one film that Martin has done that feels super mature, and although still including his signature dark com comedic tone, it just takes the subject matter a little bit more seriously and gives a little more respectful space for its characters to truly thrive. And my god, the characters are perfect. Frances McDermott is one of my favorite performances ever. She's so strong and filled with emotion and understanding. Woody Harrelson is one of his absolute best Woody Harrelson type performances, acting as a strong emotional pull throughout the first half of this film. Almost the glue that keeps this small town together. And then there's Sam Rockwell, aka the fucking man. He is so unreal in this movie, accomplishing a hard task and making me both hate his guts and then eventually tear up over how much care I had for his character in the same exact runtime. He is amazing and the character himself is perfectly written. The film has this incredible pace, always having something new and interesting, pushing the story along, sometimes diving headfirst into chaos, but dealing with a lot of sensitive subjects about our law systems, racism, sexism, and more. It's just an amazing movie with perfect direction, great writing, fantastic cinematography, and a masterful ending. There isn't a single thing I'd change about this one and it's by far McDonough's number one film. So that's it. Let me know your ranking below and don't forget to sub, turn on notifications, and try to have a decent day.